Hi there, welcome to another edition of the podcast. Today I have a very special guest for you. His name is Anadi Adwar. Um, and I'm very excited to have him on the podcast because one, he is of Polish origin and two, he is an exceptionally skilled student um, winning the International Law and Career Informatics twice in 2017 and 18. So we would get there and talk a little bit about what that journey was like as well. For now, um, welcome Anadi to the podcast. Very happy to have you. Hi everyone. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, well, I just want to point out a small mistake. <laughs> you said like winning the Olympiad. I didn't win it. Uh, like I was a gold medalist, but there are quite a few participants who are getting gold medal. So uh, yeah, that's a small difference. <laughs> okay, so it's okay. We can make it, I guess, more straightforward towards the end. But I, I like that uh, part, so I guess we can <laughs> sort of uh, connect it while we go there. So the first thing I have for you is uh, how is your Polish and why is it so good? Well, like, I guess it's natural <laughs> when you, uh, like, are spoken to science, science the very uh, uh, beginning in Polish, so that's why it was easy to learn, right? Uh, and it's the same with any language, right? That's how you learn. So if you are, I was spoken to in, like, Polish and Hindi, so, like, uh, I was able to learn both. Later, I like, only started speaking Polish as it was easy, like, everyone in Poland spoke this language, so uh, that's why I think, like, I think that I'm native in Polish. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you were learning, uh, you were speaking both Hindi, English and Polish while you were growing up at least, like, at least I would imagine before you were a teenager, or how did you balance, like, these three languages that you have? Well, like, I actually English I learned in school, so I don't think I was spoken to in English. Uh, yeah, but uh, like in, at home uh, when I was like young, uh, I learned English, uh, Hindi by uh, by my parents speaking it, uh, but like with time, we start speaking more and more Polish at home too, uh, so like. I also started to only speak Polish, so in particular, I forgot a lot of Hindi uh, by now, uh, which I might try to learn again. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And yeah, uh, but like at some point of time, I could like fluently speak both Polish and Hindi. That's that's so great. I personally have identified a lot of uh, similarities between the two languages because they go back to the proto uh, in the European route. Um, there are various words like, um, for example, fire, the word for fire is ogien or ogni, uh, which is similar to agni in, uh, in Hindi. Um, moreover, there is words like grud, which is similar to gard uh, in Hindi. As well, so with the same meaning of the same connotation, it means a castle. Uh, the contemporary modern word is uh, is a zamek, I believe. Is that uh, the correct one for a castle or a fortification around an area? Um, yeah. Right. Have you yeah. ever experienced like any similarities between the languages while you were uh, speaking, or is uh, no? So really, but I'm pretty bad in getting such connections unless they are like obvious. I see. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I never noticed any similarity between Hindi and Polish. Uh, no, oh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all right. So that's actually a cool segue to my uh, channel as well. So guys, if you are learning uh, Polish or if you speak Hindi and want to see some similarities, you can check out the videos that I have made earlier. Anadi, I would also recommend if you would be interested. Uh, you could check them out as well. So, um, the main reason, the main question I had uh, for you was um, it must have been a little bit difficult trying to assimilate in the Polish culture. Um, and the reason I ask this is because the prevailing opinion among the uh, Indian students and the workers who also come from India to Poland is that Poland is a place to stay only for 
I don't know, for the period of your study or for the period that you're working there. It's not a place that is very often seen um, that you can stay for the long term or you could settle down. Um, and the primary reason for that is one, being Polish is difficult and two, being that it's it's sort of closed culture being in the north. Um, so the question I want to ask you, like, was it at all difficult or like what's your perspective on the on the on the fact that Poland is closed or that Poland is sort of it's hard to learn the language or assimilate in the country? This is a very complex question, so I could like probably talk about it for hours, <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe let's not do that. So uh, a bit shorter answer is that I think that Poland is not that bad, like uh, in particular, okay, I will talk about Wrocław because that's where I grew up and that's the city I'm familiar with. So I didn't have any problem with assimilation, uh, like... Uh, preschool, primary school, medium school, high school, like now it's just primary school and high school. Uh, so I, I think that I wasn't really treated differently by uh, other people. And like, especially in my like classes, I felt very well and welcome. So I wouldn't say that uh, like there is a problem with assimilation because like most people in Wroclaw have definitely open-minded. Also like Wroclaw culture, uh, because of it being part of Germany, Czech Republic and different countries throughout its history, also made it like multicultural uh, city. So it's, I, I, I think like people are mostly open and welcome. Obviously there are always individuals who are like closed, but I think we can find uh, them in every society. Uh, so yeah, Ob like I wouldn't go in some places at night, but uh, like it's also true that normal like people from Poland should go to these places, right? Like I had my friends who were roped <laughs> because it would just happen the same to me. So like I would say that, that just uh, uh, like you have to be reasonable, like what to do or to go. Uh, but, but I don't think there are like any strict limitations to what you can do. You can pretty much live the normal life. Uh, yeah, and I didn't really have any racist incidents. So I, I, I think like Poland is a Wrocław. I mean, I don't want to speak about the whole Poland as I don't know it, but Wrocław is a good place like for people to settle down and uh, live there. The one thing that I agree the most and this thing that you spoke most recently is that in every place, in every society, there are these exceptional individuals who are just not welcoming and they um, are victims of the us versus them mentality. And also there are some areas that you should avoid, um, particularly. So these areas need to be researched, like don't go up there after, let's say, 10 or 11 p.m. Not that anything very bad would happen if you go there, but it's just a calculated risk. So if you want to go there and shoot a documentary, by all means, yes. However, be aware of the risks that these places entail. Um, maybe we can go back a little bit to the uh, to the schooling section. So right now, as we speak about Wrocław, there is uh, two major schools. There is the American school in Wrocław, and I believe there is a British school that has recently opened as well. And the clientele or the students who go there are primarily students of international internationals who have, or experts who have come to the country. So they believe, the logic for them is that they believe it's good for the student that they can learn better English in an international environment. Also, there is this element of, uh, I believe, racism that they feel they might encounter, which I personally also haven't experienced um, in the Wroclaw region and in that Donnerstrand area. So the question that I ask you is like, did you go to an international student school to begin with, or have you always been uh, visiting public schools? Uh, well, like I didn't go to the international school. 
uh, in the very beginning I had like one year in a private school but late then I went to normal public schools uh, so like okay. after I was like after the second class I was always going to the public school both like uh, primary uh, middle school and high school so yeah mm, and I think like in this case of this racist uh, fear I like if you like overcome this fear you'll realize that there isn't much racism going on uh, so yeah it's just the hardest part to overcome it right it's a it's a it's a mental fear it's like the fear of a snake bite right like many people die about the fear of it like and 90 percent of the snakes someone can fact check me on this but 90 percent of the snakes aren't even poisonous it's just the fear of the fact that the snake has been so similarly like um it's not a country where it's hard to assemble um, if you speak the language, for instance, or if you are also open-minded and, let's say, um, yeah, I would, I would close it at that. So if you are able to speak the language, if you're open-minded, then it's a good choice to, uh, to stay long-term there. So going back, to, I have a sort of psychological question as well. Like, um, what kind of memories do you still go back to if you think about your primary school period? Like, is there any specific thing that stands out, either positive or negative, sort of? Yeah, I, I don't know, like, probably just <laughs> that memories from primary school, like, just hanging out after school somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, either, like, playing football or, like, we had, like, a small Christmas Eve, uh, uh, yeah, I know, like, we also had, uh, let's call it battles for the mountain, there was, like, a small mountain nearby, so, like, just battling, two teams were, had to defend it, and two other team, like, one team had to defend it, and the other had to, like, get to it, so this kind of things, uh, uh, yeah, so I would say most, like, mostly both, i not sure if I have any, like, negative strong negative memories from primary school yeah maybe maybe you fall fell from the hill you were going up or something like that but you know nothing yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing would stand out like i would say as well um so i would want to make a digression here to any of the parents watching um children are pure as in they will learn and they will take biases even the, which are coming from you the public schooling system in poland is exceptional and we will talk about a bit more on that just to lay it out how it, it looks like and uh, the funding and everything so if it's a choice for you to send your children to an international school versus a public school don't disregard the public school on the sole basis that 90 percent of the children going there are of Polish origin or anything like this, if that is a thought that comes to your mind. So don't make a decision based on that. So Anadi, maybe we can talk a little bit more about uh, your experience, let's say after Usmo Klasista, like um, going to high school yes. and something yes. like eighth grade exam, which is contemporary to India's, I would put it as a 10th grade exam, where you get to choose what kind of school you want to attend, which subjects you want to take. So in Poland, this is called the Klasa Usmo Klasista Examen. And uh, so how was that experience for you? Well, when I was going to school, it was a bit different. So it was like six years of primary school. After the primary school, you take the sixth grade exam. After it, you have three years in medium school, uh, gymnasium in Polish. I'm not sure what's the right translation in English. And after this, you have three years of high school. And then after the middle school, you also have exams. And uh, after high school, you have the maturity exam. Uh, so, yeah, so after like the sixth grade for me, uh, it was easy to pick the middle school. Like I wanted to go to only one place. Uh, and, like, and it was where both my uh, of my siblings start, uh, start learned before. Like, uh, and it also was has uh, had a reputation of a very good school. Uh, so I was thinking about going there. And on that note, it's worth adding that, uh, that also the fact that I didn't have any instance in my childhood, 
but because I was picking like very good schools with very good reputations. Because in normal schools, it is true that like at least I didn't go there, but from my friends who like uh, from primary school mostly who went to other schools, they told me that, like fights and this kind of things were I don't think normal, but they occurred. Uh, so like I guess it might have it could have been worse if I went to that such a school. But you have also a choice from schools which are just good. So if you go to a good school, like you, you shouldn't have any problems. And for the same reason, like I pick for the high school, I just pick the high school which was uh, like because my middle school and high school were part of the same school, like it was the same building, so they were uh, working together, like we had the same teachers. So it was easy to like just continue with the same school within the same school. So I picked uh, the high school, and yeah. Mm. And when did this interest in programming, or I should say, competitive programming, fall into the picture? Was it in primary school? <laughs> Like, when did you discover that this is something that is important or entertaining for you? Uh, well, so when I was in the middle school, in the second class, uh, like, I was mostly focusing on physics and I was decent at math. So there was a competition which was called Team Competitions for Junior High School uh, in Comp Programming. But it also, during this com competition, like during each contest, individual contest in the competition, there were like uh, physics tasks, math tasks. So uh, I was taken to the team by my friends to do physics and math. Uh, so like when I was taken to the team, I realized, okay, it's probably worth if I learned a bit of programming. Like I wasn't supposed to do any programming tasks as I had a very good teammates who would take care of it. But still, like to uh, write formulas to the program, it's better to do it like uh, yourself than uh, engage your teammates. So that's why I started learning programming, and it quickly appeared to be like more enjoyable than physics uh, uh, or math because it's very easy. I'm not sure if you tried it or, uh, but if you try it, it's like very re rewarding because immediately after you finish a task, do something, you can see like this green light, which I immediately judge your uh, submission, your, your try to solve this task. And if it's correct, it's like green, you can compare it easily yourself with your friends. So it's like very rewarding in this regard. And it's much, uh, much easier to get to, to stay motivated to solve these tasks. So that's why I, I I liked it that much that I stopped working on my math on and physics and was completely redirected to programming, uh, competitive programming to be more accurate. Mm. And yeah, and that's what I was just doing for the next like five five six years uh, to, like, uh, until I finished high school and I continued it also uh, at my university uh after but after like one two years i started i, I was still doing it but just <laughs> uh just a bit like uh, before i was doing it quite a lot and uh, after like two years in my university uh like it was more of doing something on the side than uh, rather than it being a nine thing all right and during this uh five six year period were there any uh, challenges or opportunities that you faced um for example was um let let's be specific about the international Olympiad informatics like was it conducted by the school or like how did you hear about it or how did that fall into the picture from my friends and i like i know that there were uh, like in Wrocław, uh, in my high school, uh, it was in middle school. In the school, there was a huge. Uh, uh, there were a lot of opportunities to learn programming. Uh, so, like, I just uh, like my. That's what my friends used to do, and that's what I joined. Uh, so, 
uh, there were classes called Academia Gimnazjalna, which is like the middle half, uh, middle middle school academy or junior high school academy. Uh, so yeah, I had classes with uh, my first teacher, Karol Pokorski, uh, who's like an extremely good teacher, and like thanks to them, uh, thanks to him, I also. Uh, like, uh, Get, got interested in this in the programming as he was very passionate about it so uh yeah so thanks to that like i learned about other olympiads as well and later i started taking part in them how did you balance your academic commitments with the aspects of competitive programming because your time is limited right and well i kind of like in school, I didn't, at some point I stopped caring about like my school grades, like I was doing fine. Uh, and also in school, they are in the, in this school, they are trying to, like if someone is getting good at or something, like in my case in programming, they are like less uh, demanding in other subjects. I still had to do something and I still had to like obviously write maturity exam from like Polish uh, and similar, but it wasn't like they weren't that demanding. So I could skip classes uh, if I had like a reasonable uh, excuse, for example, like going to a programming camp and they were not perfect, but kind of okay with that. Uh, so yeah, so they were very supportive of it. So thanks to that, like I could care less about my uh, like about my other subject, uh, about my grade and subject. Uh, like because of that, I, my grades weren't perfect, obviously, but uh, I could spend more time in competitive programming. Got it. Um, so. What, what about the process or, for instance, like if there is a high school student that you were to advise who is participating in the uh, International Olympiad Informatics, what suggestions would you give to them? Like how to prepare or how to study? Like solve a lot of tasks. That's, <laughs> that's like the best suggestion and like you people often overcomplicate it, but it's all going down to solve a lot of tasks. Um, there are just maybe different ways of solving them. And like, I also, uh, like a few times I went to some programming camps and I was uh, teaching students a bit uh, what to do, uh, but it all eventually gets down to the solve more tasks. So that's my suggestion. <laughs> and Actually, I just want to mention, because I forgot a bit about it, that uh, in competitive programming, one of the best things is its community. So uh, like first, there's like a local community in your school, which solves and takes interest in it, which is nice. Then you have like uh, not that local, like a city community. We and you like we often like used to go to the same classes. Later we went to the same university, so and these contacts are still there. Uh, later we have a national community and international community, and like I still meet people uh, even like here when I moved here to London. Like I meet people in text who are know who I know like from like our competitions in both national and international so like it's very it's like great for me because i immediately like know someone i can like know some people from this so it's also a good way to like expand your uh expand your connections and yeah mm -hmm. that's that's a very good suggestion like um in any sphere it's important to have uh community with role models and uh people who are willing to support you and have the required skills and competencies. Um, who was a role model that you had? Like, what kept you motivated? Um, was it just the aspect of programming or were you looking for someone in particular? I know you mentioned a teacher uh, back in middle school. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I think like the thing which motivated me the most is the fact that I'm very competitive. So like uh, I always want to win uh, and I hate losing. So I just was very motivated to beat my friends. Uh, and especially if one other, we had a moment like when we were really racing, who is going like all in a friendly atmosphere. He was a very, very good friend of mine, but uh, uh, we were like just trying to beat each other. <laughs> so that's why uh, yeah, I was highly motivated to be on the top and uh, beat him. <laughs> Competitive spirit drove you. And I think it's taken you really far and you have only more milestones to achieve. Um, so maybe we can uh, move forward. So after you took the Matura, you decided to stay at the University of Rockstar? Or like, what was the thought process during that decision? Well, I was considering going also uh, to some universities, uh, some foreign universities. Uh, so for example, I was thinking either about England or United States, but eventually uh, it also, also, I kind of stayed also because of competitive programming as I knew that uh, like a two very good people at my university were like asking me if I can join their team. And I was like, that's, that's also something important to me. Uh, so at the end, I decided to stay here. Uh, and like, it's also kind of my, com it was also my comfort zone as I knew a lot of people from there. And a lot of like some of my colleagues and friends from schools, uh, went to the same university so it was just both for competitive programming and also it was like an easy choice to make uh, so i decided to go to work. right and was it was the curriculum challenging or uh, like would it have been a better choice to go someplace far to be outside of your comfort zone or did you find that in the University of Wrocław, even though it was sort of in the comfort zone, the curriculum was challenging enough to keep you entertained, the aspects, the opportunities for competitive programming were frequent and also dealt with? Well, I don't think I could, like, I think that for competitive programming, it was the best choice I had, like, I was considering by far. For other aspects, I, like, it's, worth mentioning that computer science in Wrocław is, and in generally in Poland is like very strong and it's on a very high level. So comparing it to like UK and US, I don't think we are worse. So like the only benefit they have, especially in like a great, very good university, like I don't know, Oxford or something similar, is that they uh, have like almost individual uh, lessons, uh, exercise le uh, sessions. Uh, so they there are like two, three people per one person. So I obviously can learn a bit more then, than you are learning with like 15 people. Uh, but other than that, I really honestly feel that it can get more, uh, it, it, like mm, if we just, Speak about skills like uh, technical skills, then I don't think it could get much better than what I had here. Mm. So, in particular, like in any aspects, I think that uh, I would uh, be worse uh, if I studied uh, in, let's say, UK than if I studied here. So, I like in, in the, this regard, I'm pretty sure I made the right choice. Mm. Like, but uh, obviously, like there are some other benefits as you meet just like more people, right? And you are kind of like thrown out of your comfort zone. So this, I would like look for benefits in this. Uh, how was your bachelor's uh, studies altogether? And what was the topic of your thesis? And uh, was it hard to find a supervisor for the for the topic itself? Uh, okay, so when I for bachelor, I was studying both math and computer science. There's a like special, uh, special department, let's say, uh, like a 
so uh, which is called like joint studies in uh, informatics and in uh, informatics and math uh, in computer science and math sorry uh, and yeah so i that's what i was uh, learning so it was pretty intense as you had to do both math and computer science at the same time uh, but i think it was pretty nice and I really <laughs> enjoyed like that time for thesis. So for thesis, it was like pretty natural for me as uh, there is a doctor now and I have it uh, Pavel Gavrikovsky, who was like also kind of my uh, point when I was doing some competitive programming, he was coaching us and like, basically he was doing everything for us like finding camps and like sending us so he he really like taught us a lot <laughs> and uh, thanks to them like we could take part uh, in this uh, in our university so like with him uh, we had a publication uh, on my third year so uh, like my thesis was naturally just like this publication with uh, like additional like descriptions and some other small stuff. Uh, so it was very easy to find supervisor as like it was <laughs> like natural right to continue with him. Mm -hmm. So that was also I think that was your first research paper or had you done something like this before? It was my first and only so far. Uh, so yeah, uh, and like I learned a lot from him because like he was the one who did most of the research. Uh, like, but I learned a lot of, of, of like from this time when uh, uh, like we were trying to figure something out. And right now, like for my second thesis, master thesis, like I still haven't uh, written it uh, because we are still in the process of researching it. With actually now, it's not. Uh, but with someone else, like uh, another doctor, Marek Adamczyk, <laughs> from my university. Uh, and like, it is still, uh, like, we are still didn't resolve the problem we wanted to solve. Uh, so we are still in the process of uh, solving. Uh, uh, the masters was the the same math and computer sciences, or was it a different uh, field? It was just computer science, uh, but ironically, while my first uh, bachelor thesis was just computer science, I think my second, like my, my research for master thesis, is more math than computer science. Even though I studied just computer science, it's really like the computer science, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's more mathy side of it. So, and what is the problem that you are trying to solve in the thesis? Uh, well, we are trying to find. Uh, okay, so the title is uh, a constant approximation for a secretary problem in gamoids. So it there is like a secretary problem, which is like how to hire the best secretary. Uh, and like we consider it a, where you can hire not one secretary but like some subset of it and the subset of the secretaries is uh, described by some structure which is called gamoid and like for, for some reasons we cannot do it perfectly but we want to do it not much worse than perfect and our goal is to like find how to do it in a decent way, like not horrible. And I might sound, at the risk of sounding dumb, I will still ask, like, what's the accuracy that you have received with your current algorithm or with your current uh, approach? Uh, we, like, okay, so, like, we are, try we have algorithms and we're trying to prove that they are constant. So, uh, like, the constant means that if you give me million secretaries on billion secretaries or like another a large number anyway we for example won't have a worse answer than like five times the best possible subset if we knew everything in the beginning so like five is this constant right so it, this it might be not five but ten it might be two like something uh, 
but it no matter how many you give me like it won't be worse than some constant and currently like the best possible uh, solution is like something is constant multiplied by logarithm of logarithm of the number of secretaries so uh, it might seem small right because for some thing like million it is around five so it's a very small but it still goes uh, like to the infinity if you take like a large if you take larger their number we will get a larger uh, word approximation so that's why we try to find like something that will give us constant as it is uh, i see i think i understood a little bit uh what the um and what do you think you would need to do in order to find a suitable solution to the problem like what are the next mm. steps for you in that thesis front uh, well it's not like very clear what to do uh, i just try to explore a lot of things so and uh, like recently I didn't do much as I was moving here. So for like one, one and a half months, uh, uh, by the Sorry, here meaning London, right? Like you're working yeah. at Jane Street uh, at the moment? Yes, I was just going to clarify that because I realized that here is not clear. Uh, yes, I recently moved from Poland to London. I, uh, like it was a pretty intense time, so I didn't do much for thesis. In particular, I didn't meet with my supervisor recently. Uh, but as soon as I settle in, I'm going like to work hard again, and like it's just exploring a lot of things and like trying to, to prove some properties of the algorithm we have. And it's not really clear what to do next. It just you want eventually to prove it and find, oh, great, it's constant, or find a counterexample and say, OK, we have to find another algorithm. I see. Um, and maybe more administratively, like um, I, I understand that you will not be a student, right? Like once the semester is over. So how much time does the university give you to finish the thesis post your subjects? Like, I think two years. Two years, right? Okay. So, um, just to be more precise, like once you finish your studies uh, at the University of Oxford, um, you have to pass all the subjects and then you have to write a thesis. And in order to defend and finish the thesis, you get an additional two years to, uh, to sort of finish that uh, project because it could be a big project that you can take or it could be as simple as a literature review, but it all depends on the person and how competitive or how ambitious they are in their nature so right um so what's what's next what's next for you and Abi? like um where will where will this uh, how is the experience at jane street been or how's london treating you uh well i'm very happy with my first weeks in london and i enjoy work uh work uh, too so yeah <laughs> Uh, not really much to say about it. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the city is great. Like, obviously, it's much different than Wrocław. Uh, uh, and sometimes it might be a bit busier. <laughs> Something, and but I definitely feel like everything is going on faster. And like, I spend way more time transporting uh, from one place to the other. Um, but I, in general, I'm pretty happy with. All right. And the company itself, like, uh, is it uh, a remote work or is it one day in the office? Like, what does the structure look like? Well, I'm going to the office every day and I want to go there every day for at least, I, I, in the, at least in the beginning, but probably even longer, like for, for a, year, a year, maybe more. Uh, I don't know. And maybe later I will transfer to do remote work, uh, like not fully, but partially made like it's unknown what will happen later. Uh, but for now, I want to go and just meet with people and have contact uh, with my team. And I think it's like easier 
a focus for me in the work than in the, at home. So uh, yeah, so I prefer to go there if mm, as long as I can, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is no like uh, compulsion from the company that you have to absolutely be there. It's more of a personal uh, choice. I think like the, they're pretty flexible and like it's all what I can talk with my manager. So like, I, I, I think they're a great example to other companies like how to handle uh, people's business and like handle each case individually. So if I have like valid arguments, there is no problem with going uh, remote and like and I guess like uh, uh, it's pretty standard to go remote for some time, like par partially. So, right. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, that's everything that I wanted to ask. Have you got any suggestions, a piece of advice uh, to two things in particular? One to internationals who want to move to Poland to study. So anything mm -hmm. on that front, like how to navigate professors or how to find uh, the best possible scenario for you and two like how to assimilate more with the uh, let's say polish uh people like mm -hmm. do they learn the language or <laughs> how would you say well so first uh i think my first advice would be that poland changed a lot so like at the opinions you might hear from some people might might be outdated so in particular like now younger generation speaks English very well and almost everyone you can uh, like get in touch using English. Uh, obviously like, people are more comfortable with Polish as this is their mother tongue so if you can learn Polish uh, it is very hard language so uh, it might take some time but if you can and you are willing to do this I recommend it it's obviously going to be easier to communicate with people uh but i think like with english it's just fine and you can easily assimilate um i would also say that it's worth not just sticking with like other international students because like then you are not assimilating it well as you are just sticking with some small amount of other students and i would just like try to reach out to all everyone no matter like if they're from poland or not uh, and yeah, I I can't really say way anything more as I for me it was more natural as I was just going to Poland uh, like from the beginning. So yeah, I... this made to a very uh, good question. I think I skipped it. So your medium of instruction of the language was Polish for the masters and the bachelors, right? Or English. I wrote uh, bachelor thesis in English. Oh, wait, you meant studies or uh, thesis? Um, actually, both studies and the thesis. Like, so I studied in Polish, but I wrote thesis in English, uh, as it was like natural. Uh, like we published in English, so it was natural like to just keep the same language. But was it an exceptional scenario, or is it is it common practice, or could it become common practice for Polish students to also write their thesis in English? Some wrote in English, some wrote in Polish. Like it's uh, a matter of choice. It's optional. You can pick whatever you like. Right. So that's very flexible of the university. Like I wasn't aware of this. This is uh, very fascinating. And for the masters, both for thesis and the medium of uh, studies, was it English or Polish? Uh, for the masters, I didn't pick, but probably English. Like uh, like current plan is to do it in English. I think like for any research, uh, English is like my, would be my go-to choice. And uh, it's just natural and, you know, it's consistent with the liter literature I read before about this uh, subject. So probably English. Yeah, okay. Um, now I have one sort of spicy question. Um, is, there, is there a divide between the let's pose it like this. Is there a divide in the administrative uh, parts of the university where Polish students are separated from the, let's say, international students? Or are there like, 
regular meetings where you can meet and greet or something like this? Uh, wait, I didn't fully understand that. Like, is there like a division between international and student for students? Yes, at an administrative level, like, um, is the administration doing something about it? Let's say. Uh, I'm not sure. If, like, honestly, I'm not sure if there's any division in any way. Uh, like, in particular, I think that uh, we have like classes together, and there I know there are some events organized uh, both in our department and like in the whole university. I think like everyone is invited and maybe like, i guess there might be a division like in recruiting as the path is a bit different for international students and polish but after this i'm not sure if there's any difference maybe the only difference is that like international students cannot go to all the classes as some classes are in polish like they can go but they won't understand uh, so but other than that i think like it's they're all treated more or less the same Right, so there is no division. I also wanted to make that point very clear. Like everyone is welcome. Like even if you could, if you want, you could go and sit in another classes. While I was studying, I was very excited about some topics. I would just randomly go to another uh, part of the faculty. Even I would go to another university sometimes to my friends just to see and hear what's going on. So it's very open. It's very flexible, and it's it's highly recommended. So if you're considering doing your master's, let's say in 2024, uh, you can reach out to me um, and I will help you out with uh, the whole process from A till Z, from the start to finish. Um, Anadi, are you familiar with any scandal that is going on with the visa uh, services? Or uh, Yes, yes. Uh, I, obviously, it's hard to miss as it is announced in all media. Uh, around uh, Poland and well, like uh, you would expect it's in the past, but at this turn out, it's still going on. Uh, I just hope that there won't be uh, anything similar. <laughs> uh, tell the audience a little bit about what it is precisely and like what the next steps could be from the government. Uh, well, like, so basically the problem was that like, there was essentially buying visas, right? So, uh, ministry, uh, was corrupt and like you could buy visa to Poland and not instead like normal process of getting it. So, uh, like, oh, in the normal government, like this would be like a huge scandal. In our current government, I would say it's a normal scandal, so uh, it's hard to predict what's going to happen soon. Uh, as like I expected serious steps to happen much earlier and nothing serious happened, so like, <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> what can they do. Uh, like I just hope that they will at least try to prevent it in the future, as it's horrible for a country, uh, right? Uh, also from their reputation internationally. But right, I, and I heard that many students were also suffering because of this, not able to get visa rights and so on. Um, I understand that this might be a tough time, but the process is going to change, so stay optimistic. And uh, I wish you the best with all of your journeys. And once again, thank you so much, Anadi, for your time today. Um, is there any final thoughts, comments, suggestions that you would like to leave for me, for the audience? Uh, well, like, thank you first for the inviting me and like, I think you are a great host. Uh, so it was very comfortable to be here. And uh, well, I wish the audience all the luck uh, with visas and everything. And I hope they will come study to Poland. Uh, or and live there uh, as it is a great place to go okay so once again thank you and thank you wow that was a lot right so if you enjoyed that do consider subscribing to the channel there will be more podcasts coming in the coming weeks and uh, yeah if you're already in poland or about to start your bachelor's master's phd this october i wish you the best